Hello and welcome to City Beat. We're your central source of news and information for the city of Rocky Mount. I'm your host, Tamika Keenan Norman, and I'm sure you've heard about our recent city council retreat. It was held in Durham, North Carolina. We talked about several things, but two of the very significant things were a housing plan as well as a parks and recreation master plan. And first off, we're gonna speak with Ken Graves, our director of planning about our housing plan, which is taking place right now. Hi, Ken, how are you? Good, how are you doing? Good, welcome to City Beat. I know this is your first time on the show. Thank you. So we're glad to have you. And before we get into some of the things that we discussed during the retreat and talk about the housing plan in general, tell me what you do as planning director, what's under your purview? Because a lot of people may not know that. Okay, um, I'm in charge of three divisions currently. Planning is made up of three divisions. Uh, mm -hmm. The planning department, planning division, uh, the inspections and community development. So I oversee three divisions, total of about 18 to 20 uh, part-time and full-time employees. Mm -hmm. So we handle all aspects of uh, building permits, privilege license, rezonings, uh, uh, annexations, well, voluntary annexations, uh, and community development. We uh, handle HUD funds, uh, CDBG, and uh, home funds. So we do rehab and uh, redevelopment for uh, neighborhoods in terms of housing. So, so you, you are busy. Yeah, basically we're, we're in a very nutshell. Busy. <laughs> we're very busy. <laughs> okay. And I know when I first got here, we were just talking about this a couple years ago. Maybe it's not been that long, but it's been a while now that city council was talking about housing. That was one of their right. top priorities. Why do you think that was so important or that is so important to city council? Well, I think uh, housing uh, overall has been important to the council. I think they've made it one of their primary goals is because uh, we've had, uh, we have some significant uh, distress in some of our neighborhoods, mm -hmm. especially around our central city. Mm -hmm. uh, housing is very important because it also uh, influences our population uh, as well as uh, our economic growth because we're a utility city. Mm -hmm. And so when we uh, don't have a, a neighborhood that's uh, uh, revitalize or absence of people. We we don't have a utility customer. We don't have a taxpayer. We don't have somebody that's paying uh, or participating in uh, our parks and recs or our schools. Mm -hmm. So we have a void there. So housing is important in improving uh, the quality of our uh, overall city. That's an interesting way to look at it because most people don't think about that connection yeah, with mean, all of that. Yeah, it is connected. Yeah. It's all connected, and mm -hmm. you're right. Most people don't think about it that way, but mm -hmm. it is. And we need to improve the quality of our uh, our inner city neighborhoods around the core of our central city, our downtown. Okay. And when you talk about population, we're at about, what, 57,000? Correct. That's our census number. We're about 57,000. Okay. So we made some leaps. Last year, I think it was 2013, when APD Solutions was hired right. to do this housing plan. Uh, what was the purpose of hiring APD Solutions? Why APD Solutions? Well, we uh, initially we sent out a, a, a request for proposal, mm -hmm. and we got about s uh, six firms solicited applications to us, mm -hmm. and we narrowed that down to four and brought in four for interviews. Mm -hmm. And from those interviews, uh, APD uh, had the uh, best methodology or application for uh, moving forward with a housing study. Uh, one of the things that impressed us is that uh, they did everything in-house. Uh, the other firms that we had looked at or interviewed they were subcontracting some of the stuff that they were going to do, and APD okay. did everything in-house. Mm -hmm. The other thing that we liked about them was the methodology that they were going to use with uh, us creating waves and uh, analysis and comparing neighborhoods against neighborhoods, each other, okay. throughout the city. So okay. that, was, that was the two primary things that we looked at in, sele in selecting APD. Okay. Tell, tell us a little bit about APD Solutions, where well, they're based. Uh, they them. are based in Atlanta, Georgia. They're mm -hmm. from out of Atlanta. They've been doing uh, community development, reinvestment, and real estate property management for about 20 years, so they've mm -hmm. been in existence. They work primarily, primarily in the uh, uh, Deep South area. Uh, I think this is their first time they've had a city that they've done in North Carolina. I think mm -hmm. we're their first. So uh, we're excited about having them on board, and they've been uh, very uh, good to work with so far. Mm -hmm. And it was nice to meet uh, two representatives from APD Solutions mm -hmm. who came to the council retreat right. and talked about one of the first steps, and you were very involved with this too, was community outreach because mm -hmm. you had stakeholder meetings, you had community meetings. Those started like in October maybe of last year? Uh, we were around the late fall of last year. We okay. had a, a series of uh, three primary meetings uh, geographically designated throughout the city. Mm -hmm. uh, some were lightly attended and some were heavily attended, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, we got a good mix. 
uh, we started with uh, uh, getting information from the community about how they feel about the neighborhoods and the quality of the neighborhoods and what issues they saw in their own neighborhoods. So that's what we were doing, trying to get feedback back from them. Okay, you yeah. got some pretty good feedback that helped with oh, the housing feedback, plan. Yeah. Okay. We got a lot of feedback. You know, people are very passionate about, about their neighborhoods. So that's one thing you can say about Rocky Mount. People in Rocky Mount are very passionate about their neighborhoods. So. Okay, so that was the start, those three community meetings. But then from there, what were some of the other tasks? I know they talked about maybe set seven like tasks that they had, APD solutions. Well, they also had uh, stakeholder engagement. So okay. we had, uh, not only did we have the uh, neighborhood or community meetings, uh, there was a stakeholder group that was assembled, and we uh, used them uh, also to, to receive uh, information or feedback about how they saw the community. And that, that was a div diverse group from uh, a cross-section across from, from different aspects of the, the community, uh, different okay. types of people. We okay. had uh, representative from the chamber, down East Partnership from children, uh, the school system. Uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Jackson worked on the committee as well. So we had a, a very good cross group of people working on the our stakeholder group. And they were uh, asked to uh, provide uh, in additional stakeholders or interview people that the, the APD could interview mm -hmm. to uh, reach, you know, to gain any more feedback on uh, how they saw the community or aspects of how how housing need to be improved in Rocky Mount. So, okay, okay. So, so that, that was, was my part. fault. I skipped the stakeholder no, 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 meeting no, no. and now, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now we go to the other yeah. task. And they also <laughs> helped establish uh, factors that we looked at. Okay. Uh, each neighborhood is graded on a uh, number of factors and we established about 16 and they were a combination of uh, sensitive stuff and just uh, general information, your standard stuff like crime data, uh, the age of a household, income, mm -hmm. uh, the number of people that attend public or private school, those type mm -hmm. of things. So those factors were uh, also used as uh, analysis in uh, uh, looking at the neighborhoods. Uh, so we used the 16 factors and then the next step they also did, uh, APD did a, 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 what they call a window survey, mm -hmm. curb appeal of each residential parcel in uh, Rocky Mount. So they did that as well. Okay, and when you say window survey, they just took went through in their cars. Right, they had, um, they partnered up with local citizens mm -hmm. and drove around the city uh, uh, and did a survey of each residential uh, parcel mm -hmm. and it's, bas it's basically, it's, it's based on curb appeal. Uh, it, nobody went into somebody's yard or okay. inspected their house per se, it's just what you see visually from the curb, that's why it's called curb appeal. So it's just the appearance of a house and it's subjective. So okay. I know some people are going to be like, well, why my house was well, viewed or scored lower than somebody else's, uh, but it's just, you know, it's subjective. Mm -hmm. It's, it's the, own, uh, the surveyor's opinion of the house. So nothing scientific in the research itself. But it does give you a glance or a look at how uh, your neighborhood is viewed. Mm -hmm. so. so they couldn't go, help me understand this too, they couldn't go into every neighborhood, of course, right? Oh, they did. They, they did? They, every, okay. What they did is they uh, got a data set from us uh, we have a GIS system that most cities use, and we're able to give you a spread, uh, give them a spreadsheet of uh, all the residentially zoned properties in Rocky Mount. So they took that and uh, and combined it with the address points, and that's how they drove around the city and scored the houses. So if if uh, address point had a house on it, it got scored or rated or whatnot. Mm -hmm. And so they looked at the condition of it from the curb, just the curb appeal. And if it was occupied, uh, in many cases you can tell if a house is occupied if you got cars or whatnot. Track. Mm -hmm. And if it's not, you know, usually you have a for sale sign in front of it, or it's boarded up. We have some, board, of course, we have some boarded up structures, so mm -hmm. they can easily say that's vacant or abandoned. So I would imagine that would have taken some time. It did. Uh, it took over, I'd say, about six to eight weeks to get all of the uh, the curb appeal, uh, the curb analysis done, the window survey. Okay. So. Okay. So. Uh, Anything else in that plan that sounds very interesting? Any findings in the plan that sound well? That so far, um, a lot of it we knew, but not to a certain degree. To, you mm -hmm. know um, about how significantly distressed some of our neighborhoods are. Mm -hmm. Of course, we know. You know, a lot of people. Well, not a lot of people. Some people said in the beginning, "Well, don't you know where your bad neighborhoods are in your city?" Of course, we do know where we got some areas that need to be improved, but we don't know to what degree that these mm -hmm. uh, neighborhoods or what conditions they are in. And uh, whenever you are dealing with funding from the states, state or the feds, you always have to have, the first thing to ask is do you have a document or a plan that states 
or shows what kind of conditions your areas or neighborhoods are in. Okay. And so now we have, we'll have one. Mm -hmm. uh, we have, uh, Rocky Mountain has tried in the past to do an analysis of neighborhoods. And previously we did um, kind of like an inner city assessment. We didn't do a, a comprehensive one because one of the things about this one that's different than ones we've done in the past is this looks at the whole entire city. So this looks at the good neighborhoods, the so-called good neighborhoods, and the bad neighborhoods as well. So this is, this is citywide, a comprehensive study. And so far in the findings, we've found that uh, some of our neighborhoods are not as bad as we thought they were, and then some of them are significantly distressed than, than, than we anticipated. Uh, we have to move into a different direction, the city of Rocky Mount, because in the past, we've been uh, demolishing properties and moving them away. That's how we've been uh, handling our uh, distressed areas. And like I alluded to in the beginning, that's not always a good thing. I mean, it takes care of the problem, you know, the short term, but mm -hmm. the long term is how do you get somebody to rebuild on that vacant lot after you've torn down a structure? And so that's what we're trying to move to now in, in our phase of uh, redevelopment for the city overall. Gotcha. And hopefully, well not hopefully, we anticipate using this plan to assist us in how to uh, leverage our existing funds with new, op new funding opportunities. Uh, they've already in the plan identified some different types of programs that maybe can assist us in leveraging the money that we already receive from HUD to revitalize some of our areas. Okay, so since this is the first type of plan of its kind, mm -hmm. a comprehensive plan like you were talking about before, things change, you know, you make things better, things may change again. Will this have to be updated after a certain amount of time? I don't anticipate it uh, having to be updated over, um, over amount of time. Mm -hmm. I think uh, this, this should give us a good foundation or starting point that we, we should be able to use for the next five to 10 years, I would think. Okay. Um, I don't think, we, I, I think uh, the update will be, it'll be final. I mean, I think mm -hmm. we'll have improvement and we won't have to do as much to our neighborhoods to get them up and going or, or stabilized as they are now. Okay, um, so plan is almost done. Mm -hmm. What are the next steps? Uh, the next steps is getting the plan adopted. As, as you uh, mentioned, we've been to the retreat. We've given a preliminary report to the uh, city council. Uh, we've had comments. Uh, given back to APD from the stakeholder groups. Mm -hmm. They reviewed the plan and they made some comments and some suggestions. And now uh, the staff will look at the second draft and we'll get back with the council and hopefully we'll be before the council in the next uh, month or so to uh, present the final draft and hopefully we'll get it adopted then. So that's the next okay. steps. All right, well good job. Right. <laughs> with you and APD Solutions, any final thoughts? Anything you want to share? No, I just uh, hope when we do have a public hearing, uh, please uh, come out and uh, participate and uh, listen to uh, the presentation. Get engaged okay. with what we're trying to do. Okay, we'll certainly have it on our website as well. Uh -huh. So thank you, Ken, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. All right, thank you for joining me as well. We're going to be right back with more of City Beat. When we come back, we're going to speak with Kelvin Yerrell about the Parks and Recreation Master Plan. I'm Tamika Keenan Norman, more of City Beat. Up next. PNC presents Downtown Live May 15th to September 18th. You're invited to the Lawn of the Imperial Center for free concerts. Hear from groups like the Embers, the Tams, Fantasy, and more. Doors open at 5, music starts at 6. Thanks to PNC and thanks to all the following sponsors. For info, visit downtownrockymount.com or call 972-1151. Join the city of Rocky Mount for Downtown Live. Hello and welcome back to City Beat. If you're just tuning in to today's show, I'm your host, Tamika Keenan Norman, and we're discussing some of the things that were topics at our recent city council retreat in Durham, North Carolina. Thanks to Ken Graves, who was previously on the show, to talk about our housing plan. And joining us right now is Kelvin Yarrell, Director of Parks and Recreation. And right now we're undergoing our Parks and Recreation Master Plan. That is correct. And yeah. Thank you for having me, Tamika. You're welcome. Thanks for coming back to City Beat. And well, I'm always happy to come to City Beat and talk mm -hmm. about our program and services and our master plan is ongoing. Um, we started the process this past July mm -hmm. and now we're at the process of um, doing our, we just completed our visioning and then we'll go into the implementation phase. Meaning, you know, the, of the five phases, this is the most important. How do you take all the ideas and concepts that our community and our consultant has worked with us on mm -hmm. and put it into, you know, real um, measurable um, ways to implement? 
Okay, so tell us, how would you describe a master plan? Because this is a, the first time that we've done this, but how would you describe it? It's not the first time. The mm -hmm. last one was done in 1999. Um, mm, and then once time? it was done, that same month it was completed, Hurricane Floyd happened, and so it made the plan obsolete. Mm -hmm. um, in order to get to rebuilding grants and those types of things from the state and federal, um, we did in 2005 an update. So okay. it wasn't a comprehensive master plan, it was an update to our 99 master plan that allowed us to do a lot of the projects um, that you see in Rocky Mountain today. Mm -hmm. So in, fast forward to 2013, management and council allowed us to have funding to do a total comprehensive parks, recreation, and open space. And what it is is a 10-year document that guides the services and programs and our business um, practices for our department for the next 10 years. Okay, now you talked about that 2005 update and the projects that were completed as a result of that. So you gotta tell me what were those projects. <laughs> you know, if you know, I tell everybody, if you wanna see our community, um, take away the projects from the 2005 master plan and, and, and look at our community then. Mm -hmm. um, things like Stiff Talbot Park was totally renovated. Mm -hmm. um, the historic tree park um, off Nashville Road. Three Sisters Park in Battleboro was done from this. Um, Denton Street Pool, a major renovation to Sunset Park, our expansion of our Tar River Greenway, um, mm -hmm. So a variety of different programs and services. Um, and then you look at the different programs that were added, um, our after school programs, our summer camps that were expanded, um, our summer night lights, and a lot of those came from um, that master plan and, and some of the thoughts that we needed to do in our community. Okay, so what are some of our current projects that are underway even before we finish <laughs> with this master plan? Yeah, it's, it's interesting um, when I was talking to another director a few weeks ago and he's like, that is a lot of projects to be on yeah. while mm -hmm. you're doing your master plan. And I said, <laughs> Yeah, um, our city uh, management and, and council and our, our citizens really um, value our parks and rec. And so um, some major projects, just to name a few, is we're looking at major renovations at Sunset Tennis Courts. Mm -hmm. There's 11 courts over there. Um, the last time they were renovated, four of them were renovated, was in 2006. Um, during that time, we left trees and some other things up, and um, it's caused some major issues. So we're going to be doing a major renovation this fall, mm -hmm. uh, hopefully at um, Sunset Park. Um, South Rocky Mount Community Center was built in the 70s, saw no re major renovations, um, currently doesn't have air conditioning in the gyms. Mm -hmm. So when you date gyms and facilities of Parks and Rec, when you say no air conditioning, they immediately know it's built in the, yeah. the, the 60s, 70s, and maybe the early 80s. Um, so we're going to really take a comprehensive approach on how we look at South Rocky Mount Community Center. Um, and. Um, Posing that as a revitalization project with some of the other things that the city wants to do. Mm -hmm. um, we're also in the process of our master plan, as you know. But at the Imperial Center, we have two major projects that we're working on. One is Maria V. Howard was a longtime citizen of Rocky Mountain um, left a bequest to, this, mm -hmm. to the Imperial Center. Mm -hmm. And so we're in the process of doing a um, Maria V. Howard exhibit um, as one of the um, um, exhibit halls of um, the Imperial Center. And we're also looking at doing a digital sign. Um, advertising and promoting at the Imperial Center has been um, uh, really tough being that we don't have a digital billboard. So we're actually going to purchase a digital billboard. It'll allow visitors and also citizens to know what's going on in um, the Imperial Center and, and also other city services, but also an opportunity to really market our, our community a little bit better as people from all over the area come to the Imperial Center. And then we are our sports complex is seeing major renovations to field five and eight, the soccer fields. Um, we're reseeding, um, top dressing, laser grading them. So they'll be just like the, the four fields inside. So we will have <laughs> eight championship soccer fields. Um, at the same time, inside of the Little League hub, and there's two hubs, there's a Little League hub and a softball hub. So the local that play Little League there will, will, will get a chance to see on the six fields. We're gonna be doing um, inside irrigation um, to the common areas. Um, if you go in there now, you see a lot of dirt, and, and, and um, we just didn't do a, a, a really um, strong job in, in bringing in some things when we built the facility. So we had to go back and put in the irrigation that we left out, which will help um, just, just the whole area pop. We did this project um, in 2013 at um, the soccer I mean, excuse me, the softball side, and now you go over and see beautiful grass throughout the inside, mm -hmm. um, not on the fields, but in the inside common areas that you walk around the side. It just makes aesthetically a lot more pleasing.
So I don't know who it was that said, that's a lot of projects you got going on. Why are you doing a master plan? But they told you the truth. OK, yeah. that's a lot, Kelvin. <laughs> it is. Uh, back to South Rocky Mount Community Center. Now, you're having a meeting on that soon, right? Yes, we are We are scheduling our second public meeting for June 19th. And okay. I want to apologize to the community because a lot of people ask. Um, we, we had it scheduled a couple times, and we had to reschedule. And the reason I, is, is our concept. Um, it's really talking about revitalization of our community, um, the South Rocky Mount community. Part of the revitalization is the community center. So as we look at the community center, and what people don't realize, the park is a 26-acre park. Um, so it's a huge park in the middle of um, our city. And so what we're going to do first in phase one is look at totally the building. Um, so we're going to do some ma look at major renovations inside. Um, we had to do some testing, and then we had to put at the point where we want to look at ident identifying um, proper funding sources to get the project done to the level that will really impact the community. And so before we go out and, and say let's um, publicize, we're going to have a, a, a meeting and and not have everything ready to go. I wanted to make sure that we had everything ready, lined up, and so when the community sees our concepts that our consultant has worked on, they understand we've also looked at funding options and lined it up the proper way to fund the project. Okay, and I know back to the uh, master plan now, I sat in on at least one of the uh, first meetings, actually it was the very first meeting mm -hmm. about the master plan, and some people, really you gave an introduction to the Parks and mm -hmm. Recreation Department, but also some people gave a little bit of input. At this point, with so many projects underway, I don't know what people, <laughs> what else we could think mm -hmm. of, but are there any really good ideas that have come out of it at this point? Can you share those with us? I will share a few concepts, and mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't, and don't hold me uh, to any of these, <laughs> um, because I, the project is not complete. Um, okay. And that once that finished document done, it will give a detailed listing of um, guiding things that we should look at as a community. But, you know, we had last uh, week our visioning portion of it, mm -hmm. and it's five steps to the master plan. We first looked at um, our existing conditions of our parks. Um, we then looked at, did a needs assessment throughout our community where we sent surveys out online, in uh, on paper. Um, you can come out to seven war meetings um, to get um, needs assessment. Now uh, we just completed the visioning portion of it. And what the visioning portion is, is looking out 10 years, how do we want our community to look? Mm -hmm. Looking out 20 years, how do you want our community to look? Looking out 30 years, how do you want our community to look? And through the process that we went through, a two-day workshop, um, it allowed us to assess um, some things that, I, you know, as Parks and Rec Director, I didn't realize um, existed um, currently in our, in our system. And if you look along, and they did it, we did a really big map, and you look along the map um, of the Tar River, um, we own over 800 acres right now along the Tar River. Let's put that in perspective. Central Park in New York is about 820 acres. So the city of Rocky Mount and the citizens and our Parks and Rec Department own enough acreage, if we put it together along the river, which Central Park isn't, mm -hmm. we actually have a park the size of um, Central Park. And so what our, our, mm -hmm. our, our department and our consultant realized is, why aren't we capitalizing on this? Yeah. Why are we not focusing on this as a regional concept that people throughout the East and, and going up 95 and 64 can take advantage of? And so we started looking at all those different things. If you, you, you tie in City Lake, Sunset Park, Bob Melton Park, our Greenway, Battle Park, the Sports Complex, the Imperial Center, um, Martin Luther King Park, Stiff Tower Park, our major bridge. Think about that. That is a park system that already shows a lot of linkage. Um, mm. That is something we should be building off of. Uh, and then you think about the private community and what, what they have. We have Stonewall Manor inside that whole area. We also have Rocky Mount Mills that are talking about a major, major renovation. We have also the farmer's market. Um, mm. uh, we have a brand new, one of the next best public libraries inside that system. Mm. If you stretch it a little bit farther, like they said, think about what we've done in the downtown area. So if we market this as a um, Central Park or a Balboa Park in San Diego, if you haven't seen what Balboa Park uh, is doing, um, it is a concept that's doable in the Rocky Mount. We don't have to buy land because we already own it all. Um, we can capitalize on, we can market it on. Um, you know, Sports Complex is a perfect example. You got 80,000 to 100,000 people already coming. Well, instead of making a left at the Sports Complex, if you made a right, you can enter our park system. And, okay. uh, you know, it's just a, it, one of those visioning concepts that came out that was like, a, 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 basically, we call it a aha moment. I mean, mm -hmm. think about it. We don't have to buy this. You can't buy land along the river mm -hmm. like we got. So 
um, our consultant really focuses focusing, focusing us on assets that we currently have and how we maximize on those assets for a strong return on investment and also um, marketing our city better. Um, Balboa Park and Central Park, um, when people said it's synonymous, um, we did a little bit more. We, he sent us home to do some research that night. Uh -huh. So I didn't get up in, in Virginia <laughs> and I realized James River always has the James River Park land. That's the same concept as what they're doing um, in those areas. And um, that's doable here in Rocky Mountain. We have this resource. So that visioning process allowed us to see possibilities for the future. And then going into the fourth part, is you know when you have these visioning ideas, is that how do we implement our strategy? Mm -hmm. um, and a great idea what he talked about with us was the possibility of hiring a marketing firm to market the Tar River Parkland. And okay. that's a name that's that's not out there. That's right, the name that right. you know we came and <laughs> came up with, and I was like, oh, that's a that's, that's a nice. doable name. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and you know having looking at the implementation strategy, how we will get it out, how we will market it, how we now brand, um, looking at Balboa Park, Central Park, as examples of how we brand our city as um, a place to come and, and take advantage. I mean, our local citizens are already using Central, I mean, City Lake and, and Sunset Park and all the ones that, what have we had outside people doing? Uh -huh. um, and along the way, we develop um, the, one of the you know, strong greenways that connect all of our communities. So think of a greenway system that connects our, our entire neighborhoods where people can get off and walk the greenway and get to um, City Lake or get off on the greenway and get mm -hmm. to South Rocky Mount, get to the sports complex. Um, those are the types of forward thinking uh, ideas that you know, we, we really enjoy hearing last week and coming up with and working with the consultants about. And then last but not least, uh, in this, you know, these two things come up a lot. Um, the community center concept was um, the need for more community centers throughout our our city was looked at and you know it, it was great to see how the consultants looked at where we should think about looking at them and why we should be doing it and those things mm -hmm. and this this what I call a, a, a real huge idea was um, a water park um, centrally taking advantage of the 64 quarter the 95 quarter our, our Tar River Park land that we have um, playing off the water um, on that and you know the people that are coming to the sports complex so you know really taking strategies that we already have in place refine them really focusing them on one major um, issue so mm -hmm. and, and then of course in July we hope to have a finished document which is the fifth step okay but some of these ideas like the water park that you mentioned mm -hmm. How would the funding come in for something like that and the community uh, centers? For and, and that's that's what we would have to, uh, to look at in the next step, which is implementation, where mm -hmm. we look at how we would fund them. What's the best way to look at it? Um, a trend throughout um, the country right now is revenue generating programs and services. And so my philosophy is, if if, if at all possible, we need to bring in programs and services that are um, revenue neutral mm -hmm. for our general fund. So um, if we bring in new facilities, a new new. Uh, a new uh, big um, projects, uh, we need to find a way to pay for them. And also, most importantly, find a way to sustain um, uh, the cost of those programs through um, impact fees, which are the fees that will be generated from usage. And, um, you know, that's one of the models I think uh, moving forward we're going to have to look at very, very strongly so that, uh, you know, uh, we have limited dollars that um, we're given in, in Parks and Rec. And so maximizing what we're given to, to really benefit our local citizens but also generate revenue for our bottom line. Okay. Um, and there's some excellent examples across the country. Um, if you look at Charleston, South Carolina, and Tom O'Rourke, mm -hmm. the director down there, what they're doing, all the, the, the communities in Illinois are special districts. That That is the way they fund the major projects. And if you look at, you know, what they're doing and how they're doing, it's it's revenue generating projects that are impacting the community locally, but getting outside of individuals to bring money to our community. And, and you know, people have a choice where they go spend their money. Mm -hmm. What we as a community, and, and especially through Parks and Recreation, want to show them that doing it through um, our Parks and Rec Department can improve quality of life, not just for our local residents, but visitors that can bring in funding to our community. Now, the dog park, because I know you've mm -hmm. been having meetings on that, oh, has yeah. <laughs> has that come yeah. out of uh, meetings on the master plan, or was yeah. that an idea already yeah. in place? Yes and no. Um, that, that idea was already in place, but we've had several people talk about the dog park. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, I'm sorry I missed that on the project, because um, it is a major um, <laughs> project that we're working on. And I, I, I'm, I am so proud of this project that we're working, because 
our citizens have come out um, and really, really voiced their, their opinions on um, why they want a dog park. Mm -hmm. um, we have anywhere from 40 to 45 citizens that come out to every meeting to help us discuss, design, plan, organize, and hopefully implement the dog park in this community. And right now we're at the phase where we're looking at site selection um, and we've, we've potentially selected um, Duke Circle, which is across from Sunset Park. Okay. Once again, mm -hmm. if you think about the Tar River Parkland, how we're playing on everything in that Tar River mm -hmm. Parkland already, and some of the land is already there, we don't have to, you know, buy it. Um, and, and we're looking at um, that as a site. Um, the committee is looking at funding options um, outside of um, the funds that we have allocated in our department's budget for, which is a true partnership with our citizens. And um, I am very proud of it. The citizens. Um, have done an outstanding job of really working with our department and saying, hey, we want this, here's how we're going to work with you to get it done, um, what else can we do to help, and um, uh, it's, it's great to see um, this group of citizens work with on this project. And that is the way we want to do all of our projects mm -hmm. here in the future, not just the, uh, you know, the Parks and Rec department doing it. I want citizen involvement, and that's why our master plan process has been so important. Um, we went to every single ward. We asked citizens to come out, support us. Tell us what you want. Tell us what you like. Tell us what you dislike. Um, what are some things you've seen around the country that we need to think about doing here in Rocky Mount um, to improve the quality of life? So the dog park is going to be a really, really great project. And Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm excited about the group. <laughs> I think mm -hmm. folks are excited, too. Anything else you want to uh, add, Kelvin? It's just an exciting time to make it for our department. Um, you know, we, we take people from the cradle to the grave, and uh, I think people uh, really don't realize that we do uh, operate uh, three cemeteries as well, um, and uh, we have 12 divisions, um, and our 65 full-time employees and hundreds of part-time employees help us provide a tremendous amount of services and programs to our community, um, from after-school programs to summer camp to arts program, downtown live, and those types mm -hmm. of things mm -hmm. are done by our department. Um, we also are ones that are helping maintain um, places like down, downtown, the Main Street, the Douglas Block, um, uh, in reference to the Booker T. Theaters operated um, by the Parks and Rec Department. So um, when you think about all the services we're offering, um, there, there are enormous amount of services, but our citizens are asking for them. Um, we're seeing in, increased growth. You uh -huh. just saw our, our program guide, and we've revamped that to, to really make sure we're reaching all markets of uh -huh. our community. Um, our website has been updated. Um, all of our master plan things are now transitioned to our website. We have online registration. Um, so citizens um, can access our services in a variety of different ways. The other thing I want to encourage our citizens to do is to send us comments, suggestions, and concerns on how we improve our system. Um, if you see vandalism, if you see graffiti, uh -huh. um, if you see litter, um, I want us to be held accountable as a, a department. And um, when you see things, uh, if you inform us, we'll take care of them. Um, our goal is to have um, not a good system, but a great system, um, and to expand it, to uh, continue to, to be inclusive for all of our, our, our segments of our population here in Rocky Mountain. And uh, I want to always thank our citizens because um, without them, we couldn't do what we do, and to watch and see them come out to our meetings and to support and, and say, yeah, you're, going, you're doing a great job, is, it's really good, so um, I want to say thank you. All right. Well, thank you, Kelvin. And I got to say thank you to, to you us. and Mark as well. Uh -huh. um, y'all do a great job of making us look good, and I tell a lot of people, um, you know, y'all you have done a really good job of helping us market what we're doing. Um, whether it's you know our special events, our, our programs, our services, our open houses, or our public meetings, um, you and your staff um, deserve a mark, deserve a big credit because um, y'all you. help us look good. <laughs> um, and I, you know, and you know, you hear me say it all the time. I mean, y'all, y'all just um, we have we have moved to another level, and that's something we're proud of, and we're going to continue to grow and and improve. So thank you. Well, thank you as well for that compliment. Mark Adcox is our photog videographer, photographer, for those who don't know mm -hmm. as well. But thank you, Kelvin. We look thank forward you. to the completion of this master plan and all those projects. <laughs> we really do. And I can tell you're still so excited about yeah. everything. You know your well, stuff, okay? Yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> I have a lot of great people working with me. All right. Well, thank you for joining us. Thank you as well for tuning in so you could get a glimpse of some of the things that we discussed at this year's City Council Retreat. I'm Tamika Keenan-Norman. Thanks again for tuning in to City Beat. We'll be back next week.